Okay, we'll call the public work planning committee on it. All the road. Commissioner Dodd? Here. Commissioner Cush? Here. Commissioner Nipper? Here. Commissioner Piercy? Here. Commissioner Serrano? Here. Commissioner Stevens? Here. Commissioner Jernigan? Here. Need to approve the minutes. Okay, need to approve the minutes. Last meeting. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I guess we'll go to the building coach. I will on our report. Good evening. Don't pay Jenny. Contrary to what it sounds like, I have not been screaming at a football match all afternoon, I promise. <laughs> okay, Let's start with um, our building permits. Uh, we issued a total of uh, 233 building permits this month, 49 of which are single family dwellings for a total Revenue of $80,295. And zoning, uh, we have a total of 140 inspections, 27 of those in the cases. And if there's no questions, I'll go on to development tax. Uh, we collected a total of 449250 I don't have those numbers because we collect for all the structures in not only Rutherford County but also inside the city limits of um, Murfreesboro, Smyrna, Laverne, and Eagleville. Um, so while I know our structures, I don't know theirs. I could break it down right now. I've just got the development tax in dollars. No, that's fine. <coughs> We need to approve the report. I'll make the motion to approve her report as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. I'm going to read off of a narrative here that I've got a copy of, if anybody would like. I um, would like a copy of that. Um, most of our line items are unchanged this year, but I'll go down through them anyway. Um, administration, of course, hasn't changed. Uh, deputies has went up because we have asked for an additional position this year. Uh, we would like to hire a dedicated plans examiner. Currently, our assistant director does all of our um, plans examining. He also does all the commercial inspections as well as his assistant director duties. Um, I did include a chart to show the increase in um, commercial permits that we've issued. Oh, they should be on your iPad. Um, that we've issued over the last, this goes back 10 years, but specifically for the last five, six years. And you can see that the commercial, the number of commercial permits that we've issued uh, over the last four or five years has significantly increased. So <clears throat> our assistant director does all the inspections and all those plans reviews in addition to everything else that he does. So um, I think it's time we had a dedicated plans examiner so they can do strictly that, which leaves him more time to do commercial inspections. <coughs> um, so the salary supplements reflect all the employees in addition to that plans examiner um, position which we've added into that line item. Um, 
307 communication is not changed. That's our telephones, cell phones, etc. And there, I believe there's enough money in there to add an extra desk phone and a cell phone for an employee. <coughs> Uh, data processing services, there is no change, but I would like to um, note that we still have the $10,000 in there for implementation for the new software. Our software, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> bids were received last Wednesday, and we've got the one, currently got them under advisement. There was seven bids received, so we haven't, um, we haven't gotten a chance to review them yet to go through them to dwindle it down to a couple. So we've got that in this year's budget because we're just not sure how much we're going to need until we decide on the bid. We're not going to know how much we're going to need for that software. Uh, dues and memberships is unchanged. Maintenance agreements. Also for software, the annual um, agreement for the software that was in the budget last year, we have put in there again this year for the same reasons as uh, data processing. <coughs> Postal charges, no change. Printing stationery, no change. Travel, no change. Contracted services, no change. Um, gasoline, we've added an, an additional 5,000 this year just because we're, <coughs> we're gonna be cutting it real close this year and if we do get approved for an additional employee, we'll have an additional employee in addition to the extra. Uh, office supplies is no change. Uniforms, no change. Other supplies, no change. Inserts, no change. <coughs> uh, data processing equipment, we have increased that an additional 3,000 to allow us to purchase enough iPads for the inspectors to do on-site uh, field inspections to take with them with this new software. Um, we have to purchase the iPad so that they can do field inspections. So that's what that extra 3000 is. <coughs> and motor vehicles um, on the back of this sheet that some of you may or may not have. I have a list of all of our vehicles. <coughs> The two highest mileage vehicles that we have are the last um, two-wheel drive vehicles that we own, uh, that we have in our department. And one of them is 160,000 miles, one of them is 180,000 miles. So we would like to replace those two this year. <coughs> and that's it. Does have any questions I'd be happy to answer them. Budget or <coughs> we usually let them present their budgets, and I won't make a recommendation until the budget committee. But we're in basic agreement with this budget. So you're okay then with an additional position? Yes, I think this gets us back to where we were in 2007 or 8. We've Actually. used three positions over that period of time, and this has <coughs> gone on. And as the volume has gone back up, we've sort of added them back. So this just puts us back to where we once were. Yeah. And seeing that you, your your line items 106 through 112, or excuse me, 212, have increased by one employee, but I'm yes. not seeing a significant budget increase. So you're absorbing. There is. Well, there's not significant, but it is. I'm not um, seeing a, a about an increase. <coughs> excuse me. 439 to 444. What am I missing? So what are your 444 to 493. It's in the last column, Phil. Yeah. In department request, it's 490. Got it. Thank you. 493. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's quite good. Yeah, it took it took a minute to find it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I kept going 17, 16. Yeah. yeah. Since this is basically first pass at the budget and there's more discussion to come, I would like a motion to uh, approve this budget request. Second. 
Thanks for the notes too, that's helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Evening commissioners. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Before we get into our budget, we just have a couple of our normal reports that we present on. Uh, the first is the available lot inventory. <coughs> Excuse me. If you look at page four of four of that first report, you'll see our total available lots as of the end of February of 2018 is 696. Again, these are lots that are on the ground available for building permits right now. That's up about 40, 50 lots from last month. We had uh, several larger subdivision sections be approved, uh, or be recorded, I should say, last month. So that kind of uh, inflated the numbers just a little bit. We are getting into the springtime when we start seeing a pickup in uh, build construction story. activity, yeah. right? So. This number is just continuing to fluctuate again. Really, for the last year, year and a half now, we've been pretty much consistent somewhere between six, seven hundred lots. It's been fluctuating that whole time. Uh, you can see this time last year, it's only up two lots uh, from this same month in 2017. Uh, our subdivision plats that are not recorded that last part of the report uh, staying steady right about 3,400. Uh, typically, when this lot, when the, the first list goes up, this list will go down just because those sections are taken off of this list and are added to the other. So again, we're just seeing the fluctuation that I would expect to see right now. <coughs> we have many more in the pipeline. Though. Yes, we do have a lot in the pipeline. A lot, a lot in the pipeline. Uh, if there's no other questions about that, we'll go ahead and jump into the rezoning report. Uh, we considered three requests at our last planning commission meeting. Uh, only two of those are going to be considered at the board of commissioners meeting next week. Uh, one of them, uh, Ms. McCord's request on West Jefferson Pike was actually withdrawn at the meeting. They want to take a step back and kind of reevaluate their plans for the property. So right now that one's just kind of on the back burner. It's so Mona Road. Uh, a little, a little further. It's uh, actually closer to Powell's Chapel. It's at the corner of Powell's Chapel Road. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In West Jefferson. In West Jefferson, right. Uh, the first application is for by John Elliott with uh, Front Street Partners. This is located on Elam Road right off of the uh, Joby Jackson Parkway near the interchange at I-24. Uh, the applicant's proposing to rezone the property in order to locate the headquarters for their construction company, Southern Building Group. Uh, the applicant submitted a concept plan and some renderings, interior drawings, whatnot that are included on your iPads. Again, this is not a planned development, so these are just conceptual, but it was to give an idea of what it is they're proposing. Uh, they would have very limited, uh, if any, outdoor storage of construction equipment. Uh, mostly it would be office uh, type activities is really what they're wanting to concentrate on. Uh, they may add a, a second structure you know, for uh, storage in the future, interior type storage, but uh, that's really the, the, the particulars of their plan. Uh, during the Planning Commission's meeting, there were several speakers that did relay concerns regarding the intersection of Elam Road and Joe B. Jackson. Uh, Planning Commission asked staff to meet with City of Murfreesboro officials just to see what might be done at that intersection right there at Elam Road and Joe B. Uh, we have met with city officials and we're starting that dialogue already. So we'll kind of see where things go, any potential traffic improvements, how those might be shared. Uh, we'll just kind of see where that all, where that all goes. But uh, that was barely the, the biggest concern uh, of the neighbors. And Mr. Kush, if you had anything to add from the Planning Commission on that, uh, that was primarily the, the concern. From a, a land use standpoint, I don't think there's really any question of whether or not the use was appropriate. They just, there was a lot of concern about the you know, traffic improvements. Um, what they're proposing, we're not talking a lot of large vehicle traffic. It's really just office type traffic. Uh, so this really wouldn't have that much impact on the intersection. From that standpoint, the use really shouldn't be uh, that much more burdensome to uh, the intersection that is already experiencing a high volume. So uh, after discussion, the Planning Commission did ultimately recommend approval by a unanimous vote. 
The other application that was considered is actually an ordinance amendment uh, regarding temporary uses, particularly things like firework tents, food stands, things like that. Uh, when I was at a, uh, a, a planning meeting not too terribly long ago with some of the uh, colleagues from the city of Murfreesboro, uh, of course during the 4th of July is when we see most of the activity and we get the applications for temporary firework tents around the 4th of July. Um, those are required to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, for a special exception and they typically we see the same ones year in and year out and have seen several of them for you know, 10 plus years. Some of them not for so long but uh, typically you see the same ones over and over. Uh, something that the city of Murfreesboro started doing was added some uh, amendments to their ordinance which allowed them to do an administrative renewal for certain tents provided the applicant is the same locations the same, everything with the application list in this was the same in previous years, and there were no issues relayed to staff as far as any uh, problems with the site, any you know traffic functioning, anything like that. There were no reports of any law enforcement actions or anything like that on the property. So we approached both the board, our staff, we approached both the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Planning Commission to see, kind of gauge the temperature of what they might think if these would be appropriate amendments to make in our zoning ordinance. Uh, they agreed that uh, they would like to see that. This would help take a little bit of the um, stress off the Board of Zoning Appeals as well. With our new ordinance, we put a lot more on the Board of Zoning Appeals than was there previously. And quite frankly, these type of applications, the ones that are in good order, pretty much fly through anyway. So what we've done is prepared some amendments which would essentially enable us to have the ability to make administrative approvals of these firework tents, seasonal, displays, things like that, that would normally have to go over and over and over, year in and year out. Uh, if they're new, they still have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. If there's any changes to them, they would have to go back. Or if there were ownership. complaints or ownership or anything like that, and that would still have to go back. So there's plenty of language in here that would allow us that flexibility to have to take them back if we felt they needed to go back. But uh, the Planning Commission did have a public hearing on this, and they did recommend approval by a unanimous vote. So I'll be happy to answer any questions on either of those applications. If you're in, if, if you've done it once, <coughs> a second year. Correct. That's when you could start. You, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. No track record. Just one year. One year track record. Correct. So a good track record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. If it's a bad track record, then right. we make it, it come take, back. Uh, just, right. just one time, mm -hmm. right. and then you right. can just simply renew it. Yes. On the uh, zoning on Eglum Road. The county redid that intersection. Yes, added a turn. Previously. Yes. So it's had significant right. improvements. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, sir. That's good, too, by the way. They did a really they good did job. did a really good job. Is it the same uh, builder that there's a building downtown here that's really attractive? I believe it is. Yes, sir. Uh, right off of uh, Front Street, I believe. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the same Front, people. Not Walnut, but near the one, one below yes. Walnut. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the same one. Does that conclude this portion of yes. your yes, regular planning? I'll accept the budget. budget. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'll make, make a motion to accept that. Second. <coughs> second. I even said. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Mike and I are pleased to present to you the first uh, iteration, I guess, of the uh, proposed fiscal year 2018-2019 budget for planning and engineering. Uh, Mike will follow up with the motor budget uh, when we're done with this. The materials are on your iPads as well. Uh, we'll be concentrating on the actual budget worksheet uh, as opposed to the other document. I think that's the first page in the, uh, on your iPad. Uh, as uh, Tanya had said just a few moments ago when she was here, uh, most of our line items do remain unchanged as far as the salaries and everything. We just plugged in the numbers that we were given from finance. Uh, our board and commission fees, again, had stayed the same. Uh, some of the major changes, I'll kind of go over those, and Mike, feel free to chime in if I miss anything. Uh, first would be under line item 308, consultants. We've had uh, a number of conversations about the uh, long-range thoroughfare plan update for Rutherford County. Uh, this would give us some startup costs for that. We anticipate that this would be a couple-year process, so we wouldn't budget the entire cost for 
the first year. We anticipate probably half one year and half the next is kind of how we see this uh, working out. Of course, we would have to bid this. We would have to be you know, request for proposals. We take the proposals in, uh, evaluate those, and then make a recommendation at that point. But we feel that this would give us enough money for startup. Uh, we would use this to coincide with uh, the city of Murfreesboro, the town of Smyrna, uh, their long-range transportation plan to kind of make it all cohesive to work together. Right. You'll see under 320 dues and memberships, that number went up uh, pretty significantly as well. Uh, our membership with the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization, the MPO, they have uh, merged with the Greater Nashville Regional <coughs> Council. As such, their fee structures have changed. That's really the, the majority of that uh, change is for that particular reason. Uh, legal notices, maintenance agreements, all that is pretty much unchanged. Uh, similar to uh, Tanya's budget, you'll see uh, a little bit more money in data processing supplies as well as data processing equipment. Again, this goes back to the electronic plan review software package that, as she stated, uh, we've received the bids. Uh, the bid prices are kind of all over the map. So uh, we're in the process right now of evaluating those and, uh, and kind of weeding it down to two or three uh, firms that we'd like to have a short list interview with. So again, we might be able to take some of this money out of the startup for this year's uh, fiscal year budget with the remainder in the following year, just a matter of which uh, firm we end up going with and what the costs are. So right now it's uh, just a little bit up in the air. Uh, you will see also under motor, ve motor vehicles, uh, line item 718 and 729 related to that. Uh, you recall that last year uh, we did uh, budget some money for some vehicles and we had secured a, a CMAC grant as well. Unfortunately, uh, we were approved for the grant, but then the Federal Highway Administration came back and what they were going to pay for was significantly less than what we were led to believe they were going to pay for on the front end. So the state issued yeah. the grant and then through the review process, the the federal government changed it. Right. So we ended up not getting any vehicles and not using the grant. So that's why we're just asking this time for straight funds for two new <coughs> inspector, four right. four inspector vehicles. And the last last time we got uh, vehicles for planning and engineering was uh, 2007. So it's been a long time since since we've had vehicles. Um, our construction inspectors are putting <coughs> anywhere from 12 to 14,000 miles. Twelve to 14,000 miles per year on there. So we are covering a lot of ground, uh, and we think this is uh, time that we get some new vehicles. We are actually using uh, building, one of building coats or bluffs vehicles for one of our inspectors. So we're, we're in desperate need of a couple of vehicles. Are these trucks, cars? Trucks. trucks. These will be four-wheel drive trucks. Four wheel four trucks. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. And uh, I mean... Do you have an idea yet on a type of brand? Or? I, I think they're looking for a, um, a couple Dodge extended Dodge. cabs. Yes, okay. Right. 55,000. All right. Those are off the state bid list. That's right. Next question. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the status or yes, the standard right. procedure. Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the truck that y'all have been borrowing is about to be replaced. Well, excuse me, they've been requesting well, it's it to be replaced, yeah. so it's no, longer, it's no longer their truck, perhaps. No, it's, it been, be trans it's been transferred to our department, um, and it's, um, we're very grateful for building coats. It was coats. one of the ones we replaced last year. Right, We right. transferred it to work planning. And uh, it's uh, in our, it's with 157,000 miles. Right. It's a different one. <laughs> right. This one it doesn't leak oil like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's it's uh, it's a good truck, but it's a two-wheel drive truck, and it's showing its age and mileage. So we're okay. we're needing. We can use it still for. We have a summer intern program for our stormwater, which you'll see on our uh, budget following this. Uh, we use those for um, stream assessments that we have to do every year for the state requirement for our stormwater program. So. We will use it, our summer interns will use it. One will park, uh, they'll have a couple inspectors. Uh, we'll park one at the end of the stream and, and then drive back to the beginning and then they'll walk the length of the stream and have a vehicle to drive back to the other one. So it's, that's what they have to leapfrog throughout the county. So that's what we're asking for. Those, those are our, our big ticket items like Doug was saying. Yeah, you'll see the budget itself has gone up about 
to seventy five thousand dollars but a majority of that could be attributed to the vehicles and the long and range, the long -range transportation, transportation plan yeah and doug volunteered to cut his salary to help mm -hmm. offset that that's really nice. it's not a funny <laughs> joke hey yeah, i should quit saying that <laughs> and first somebody takes you seriously you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do we do with used trucks we we use we them. We surplus them. We surplus yeah. them. at some point. We do. We put them on gov deals. <clears throat> we, we'll use them till the wheels fall off. We've got uh, a couple down at the maintenance shop. One's got uh, the floors rusted through uh, the floorboard, and and they're, they're not worth driving anymore. Either that, or they they take the jaws of life to them and practice. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And they really seriously, do. Yeah. they do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. They, they practice. Extraction, mm -hmm. yeah. Extraction, yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's our our stormwater. I mean, our planning and engineering, and then I have my stormwater uh, budget after this. So we're available for questions on our budget. Any other questions? What is kind of, what is your your justification for four-wheel drive? For four, for four, four wheel drive. Yeah, four-wheel drive. Well, the it's for the uh, construction of new right. subdivisions. It's uh, most. Um, when uh, most developments are rough pieces of land that they have to go back and, and uh, off-road essentially to to make the inspections. It's it's off the street, uh, a lot of it. I would say it's a stream assessment too. Right, those not so much. We we uh, we park those on the side of the road in a safe okay. location, um, but we usually don't try to go off-road through somebody's property. They, they'll just walk through the, the, oh, okay. the property. But a construction site that's that's uh, permitted, we will have access to that and, and inspect that. You got your new surveying equipment last year, right? Yes. That, that was all? That was, yes. You made uh, that, was that, was was that was at a storm warrant. That was at a storm warrant, yes. Yes, and we have used it uh, several times. Good. Good. We we help uh, survey uh, landfill. We help uh, the highway department for construction staking. We do uh, topographic surveys, boundary surveys for the county, uh, for site plans and whatnot. So we, we're getting a lot of use out of it. Mr. Mayor, have you yes. looked at this? We've looked at this. We are. We still have a, may have a little bit of further review on the, on the vehicle. That'd be the only thing. We hope that I hope, we sort of have to wait till we see what all these sort of add up together and what that's going to do to the total budget before we make some some fine tuning. You might say from time to time. <coughs> well, I'll make a motion that we send the planning and engineering budget on the budget committee. Second. All in favor. Uh, uh, and then uh, next on your iPads, we have the stormwater management budget. And uh, I'm sorry, this, let me, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Did you have a revenue for the previous? Oh, uh, well, we did. Yeah. Was it on here? It, it was on the. Uh, yeah, hold on. <coughs> the, uh, if you go under the planning and engineering budget materials, it should be the third. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we're anticipating uh, with development tax about 1.83 million dollars is what we're anticipating right now based on our past growth and trends and, and whatnot I try to be conservative on those numbers okay. thank you yeah, sorry thanks for the button yes sir backdrop thanks Mark. okay um, stormwater budget is um, a little bit less than than last year's um, we have uh, a couple changes that we're proposing uh, as part of the stormwater program education is one of our six items that we have to perform to state standards and our um, we're fortunate to have a, um, a project wet coordinator bounty urban that uh, has worked for us for the past few years she <coughs> formerly was um, through the uh, Discovery Center and uh, the 
the contract through them uh, ended and she, we were fortunate to have her uh, come with us. But we share, we share Bonnie with the city of Murfreesboro, the uh, town of Smyrna, and uh, uh, Laverne as well. So we, each municipality and the county government has to meet these education standards and she is part of it. And part of her salary is through um, fees that they contribute to the county uh, to help cover her, her salary. Uh, much of her salary in past years has gone to um, supplies, training, and travel. Uh, when she moved over from the Discovery Center to, to the county, a lot of the equipment and um, uh, supplies uh, the Discovery Center got rid of, so we've been rebuilding her uh, inventory of, of supplies that she uses for her stormwater education and uh, equipment for training. So, but she she has been uh, at the same rate, uh, I think, since I don't have the numbers in front of me. But before she came here, she's it's been at, at the same rate hourly rate since like 2007, I believe is is the number that sticks in my head. So what we're proposing to do is not change the amount that we're receiving or spending on her. We're reducing in uh, line item 499, some of her supply money uh, is going down and then we're gonna increase her salary, give her a little bit of a raise. So that number's reducing the, the supply and then increasing the salary on there. So that's the only, only big change there. Um, and then on line item 399, we um, are also required to do um, stream testing, uh, biological, ecological stream testing that is required by the state. We have to hire outside consultants, but we've partnered with uh, <coughs> MTSU, their biology department can do that testing for us at a, at a uh, rate uh, much cheaper than a, an outside consultant. So we'll be using them and this will be part of a, a, uh, a five-year cycle that we have to um, strip test all the streams in uh, the county for contaminants, pollutants, and whatnot. So the state uses that information in their um, assessment of all the streams as well. So uh, we bumped that up $1,000 from previous years to uh, handle the MTSU uh, contract. and that. That'll be a multi-year, uh, I think we can do it in three years uh, during that five-year cycle. So that's just a, a requirement that we have to do every year to make, to make the state and federal EPA clean water standards. Um, let's see, um, we are asking for uh, some data processing equipment that um, Doug and Tanya mentioned earlier, the, the plans review we're asking for a, um, typically um, construction plans come in two foot by three foot sheets of paper, the large sheets of paper construction plans. So right now we're set up with only, um, you know, 20 inch monitors. So we're, <coughs> we're transitioning to this plans review uh, program and software. We're going to need some equipment to help us review this digital submittals and this is this part of it, uh, these digital plan review table. Essentially, it's a large monitor that you can, it's a, like a big touch screen that you can work with. And that's, that's our only um, other big ticket item on, on our budget. But overall, we're down, uh, I think, $5,500 from last year. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have. Back to testing the streams. Yes, sir. What is your definition for a stream? Um, it is a, is, is a, well, before they had, you had your, your blue line streams, your intermittent, and what, uh, wet weather conveyance. So the, the state and the federal government have issued uh, certain flow characteristics, you know, the amount of water that's flowing through, the, but also the uh, life that the, the, the stream supports. It, it'll have um, 
plant life and animal, bug, insect life that is in this stream uh, eight or more months out of the year. So that's it's a that's a roundabout way to say that there's there's things living in it and the water flowing through it. So would you be able to <clears throat> test what a lot of people would call a creek? Yes, sir. Right. If it's got water flowing at six, eight, 12 months out of the year, uh, that's probably been mapped as a stream. That's something that we'll have to, one of the uh, main streams, tributaries, unnamed streams, those, those are all have been recognized and there's a list of those and we have to go through those every five year cycle. We have to get those tested. Can you, can you test a river? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. The, the I plan table is, is, you're still looking for the software for the yes. plants and metals. You're yes. Not, but we know this will be compatible with whatever that may be. Any, any, right. any version. Right. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. It would be uh, very helpful to have, have that. I'd love to have that. Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> May I ask a revenue question, Martin? Yes, sir. <laughs> you, your land disturbance fee, uh, you have a projected $50,000 revenue. Right. Describe what that land disturbance fee is and who pays it. Well, any, any development um, that comes in, a subdivision, uh, say for instance, where they have to uh, clear, clear and grub, remove trees, rocks, dirts to build a new subdivision, new new development. Um, you're disturbing the land. You're, you're, it's essentially a grading permit. Mm -hmm. uh, we also collect that on uh, tracts of land where somebody's building a house. They, they will just pay the, the base fee of $150 for uh, clearing the land to build a house. But it's usually based on um, the acreage. There's a base fee of $150 and then each additional the acre is $100, and that helps pay, uh, well, help, helps offset our, our stormwater uh, requirements to have an inspector go out periodically and inspect to make sure they're not polluting the streams and creeks and rivers. Who, who sets that amount? That's um, been set for a number of years, um, as before I got here. Do, does the county have the ability to change that amount, or is that state? tell you what the maximum um, is? I don't the land disturbance fee is the fee that the commission sets. Yeah, I don't think the state mandates. No, I don't think it's the state mandates. Mandates. Is that something we might want to explore? Yes, sir. Increasing? Yes, sir. I've been wanting to do that. If, if I could clone myself um, and uh, give myself more opportunity to, to investigate that, we've just been busy with reviewing plans and, and the review cycle uh, that we're going through, uh, construction, overseeing construction and uh, stormwater complaints. It's keeping me very busy. I've been wanting to do this for years. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, regulations are getting tighter. They're not getting yes, sir. less restrictive. Yes, sir. So it puts more demand on the department. Yes, sir. We have, we have three um, in Planning and engineer, we have three construction inspectors. In stormwater, we have one stormwater inspector who uh, makes sure the erosion prevention measures are in place before they, the contractor breaks ground and uh, periodically inspects those to make sure that uh, we're not polluting creeks and streams and rivers and keep, keeping on good measures with the state. So this is ultimately it's just passed on to a home buyer. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the other revenue sources we have uh, project wet contributions. Like I said, we share our project wet uh, educator coordinator. Um, that's we receive fees from Murfreesboro, Smyrna, and Laverne, and that that's like I said that helps pay uh, Bonnie's salary. And then she also collects fees when she has training. Uh, she'll buy snacks, and this is essentially repaying of those snacks that she charges. 
one at, at your convenience. Um, you might want to just investigate and come back with us to us. Oh yes, sir. What your yes, thoughts sir. might be about? Oh, I've got a lot of thoughts. Okay. <laughs> sir. I think David increased the building permits right for right. 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 Several of those categories got adjusted. Yeah. Uh, it didn't, yes. didn't seem to slow anything down. It moved them up to nearly a self-sufficient office. Didn't got closer. Sorry. They're 100,000 short they now. Are, aren't you? No. no, they yeah, are. The she she, she, right. she likes to brag. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Makes everybody else look bad. <laughs> but no, this stormwater is a federal and state mandate, that unfunded mandate that we have to take care of. And we one of the items in here, um, the other, let's see, other contracted services, we have to pay the state $3,500 a year just for the privilege of being part of their MS4. Um, so. I mean, some counties, the homeowners paying 20 bucks a month, stormwater fee. Right, and so. that's, we've, we've investigated that with, uh, County Attorney's Office, and that's going to be a hard sell to to start that up because of the County Powers Relief Act. But we've got other ideas to offset this. Well, I'll make a motion that we forward the stormwater management budget on the budget committee. Second. Made All in favor? Aye. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, see that is the, the daily activity sheet it's very noticeable uh, the last three days of the month uh, we took in eight hundred fifty one dollars that was just for the brush that came in from commercial stuff uh, so what I would like to discuss tonight is normally during the summer months and our summer months are April through October uh, we're open two Saturdays a month first and third for a half a day with so little revenue coming in, I'd rather not spend that overtime. And I went through the calendar and looked at each month. The third month or third week of each month works out to be the best, to where we would not open on Monday, but open on Saturday, regular schedule, an eight-hour Saturday. And that would give all the residents opportunity for a longer day anyway. And that much more, so they'd have to do a little planning ahead. But that way, we wouldn't get into overtime to do that. And I'll go along with that and we'll post that and make those changes and, and start that the third week of April. Uh, first week of the most every month, not every month, but the first week has most of the holidays where most of them hit. Uh, either you're going to take a holiday off and be closed an extra day or something, so it, just, it worked the third third week works out there that nothing interferes. I want to talk about that a little more, you know, move on to Recycle Center. Is this to just let people bring brush to the county landfill? Yes, sir. We have a lot of commercial brush haulers that come in anyway, which that would hurt them a little bit on Monday, but being open on Saturday, 
may actually help them because they may do a lot. I don't know for sure, but a lot of times on Monday morning, we've got several in this past Monday, or not the past Monday, but the 26th was the first day, and there was uh, 15,000 tons of brush brought in that day. And then on Tuesday, it was 14,000, and Wednesday, it was 3,000. 3, so a lot of that 15 would probably come in on Saturday afternoon before it closed. And we're burning these? Yes, Which we would prefer that people take it to the city of Mercerboro and have a ground for mulch. But it's hard to talk them from coming from Las Casas and driving all the way to Florence Road when they're literally driving right by the landfills. So you're talking about just taking brush that third week of the month? No, we'll take brush every day we're open but the third week of each month we would be closed on Monday and open on Saturday we still have a, a 40 hour week no we're well, not open on any of the other Saturdays in the past we've been open on the first and third Saturday for four hours and of course that puts us in overtime those two weeks so if we make this move and not open on Monday but open on Saturday then we don't spend the overtime labor hours because our revenue is basically gone away. Didn't have anything to do with shutting the gate? We didn't shut the gate. We just don't take the construction to the demolition. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. People I've heard comments say it's shut. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> For construction demolition by all practical purposes, yes, that is correct. We have to make a decision on that to allow you to implement that, or you, without objection, we'll do that. If you want to, if you want to take action, it's it's your prerogative. I just don't know what the users needs. I can't I can't even respond. Mm -hmm. It just the full day helps your residential people, I guess, a bit more than it does the commercial people. Well, commercial people that normally finish the day on Friday, if they work on Saturday, some of them do, some of them don't, and they load their trucks and they wait till Monday to come, so they would be able to come on Saturday instead of waiting till Monday. And then the residential folks, they would have Saturday morning to get all their brush collected and then still be able to get it hauled up there and, and get it unloaded by 2.45. Uh, the way we've been doing it, they have to be out by, by 12, unloaded by 11.45. So it gives the residential folks a little longer day to work on it. They would have to plan their weekends accordingly. And the commercial guys have the other three Mondays to, to not be done. <coughs> Y'all want to think on that and come back to it? If they don't take action, that's we're notifying them. That's that's yeah. going to be the plan. <laughs> And on the recycle centers, of course, we, we've stayed busy on those, and we're continuing to be busy. The cooler weather, the damp weather slows residents down, but the weekends when it's pretty, like what, last weekend, it is rough. Uh, we, actually, we are actually two and a half drivers short of manpower, uh, but my drivers have done an extremely good job of keeping the centers open. We have not had to close one because it's full. We've had to close them because electricity is out, some other issues, but not because they're full. Uh, but this last weekend when we finished up, we, we had, uh, there's 33 compactors out in the centers. Most of, most of, well, 12 of the 14 have a cardboard compactor, two of them don't. And then the rest of them are trash compactors. We hauled 33 trash compactors over the weekend. Uh, we actually dumped 13 of them. The rest of them were put on the hill yard for storage and we used every open top we had. And when we started this Monday morning, we had 129 loads on the ground to haul. And Mondays we have five, normally have five drivers. I was in a truck a little while yesterday. My mechanic was in a truck and my truck woman was in a truck. Uh, so we're struggling, but my drivers are, are keeping up with it, barely. Uh, but the, as the population grows, things are going on it just makes it a little bit tougher also 
we run the schools. There's we call them 60. If you ask the school system, they'll, they'll say it's 59. Mitchell Nelson to us is two schools. There's one across the street from each other, so, and their trash service is separated. So that's the reason we come up with 60. Uh, but I met with the county school board last week and asked for some help. Uh, the schools are not recycling as well as I think they should be able to, and our trash route is at capacity. He's averaging 42 hours a week right now just to get it picked up. That's without a breakdown or any trouble. And of course, if we have trouble, then it goes longer. If the schools continue to build and not recycle any better, we're going to wind up putting another truck on the street. And I don't think we really have to if the schools will help us. And it was a very productive meeting. Uh, so they're going to look at that a little more closely. We're still looking. Our calculation number uh, that we're operating with today is the county schools, 30 children generate one cubic yard of trash a week. The city schools is 25. Uh, and the reason for that, the city schools has the grant, does the feeding program for breakfast, lunch, and a snack. And the children don't eat all that food, so it generates a lot more trash. So that's the reason our number is different. But when school starts back uh, in August of 18, we plan on bumping those numbers to 35 children for county and 30 for city. Uh, Everybody tells me we can't make, cannot make them recycle, and that's right, we can't. But we could cause them to have to. So they'll have to. There's a world of recycles still being thrown away in the trash. Now on the other side, they're doing a really good job of not trashing the recycle. They're just not using it efficiently. Uh, so that that's kind of where we're going with that. But if if things don't change, we're going to wind up with another truck on the street, and operational cost is. $4,777 a week to run that trash route. Would it be worth investing in containers within the school? I understand one concern with the schools is they have one container. One container. To, to accept refuse in the building, in, in the classrooms. The, the janitor has a cart with a container. It's not, it's not easy to separate your, your trash stream. Mm -hmm. So it ends up undisciplined and gets into one stream, goes in the dumpster. The I'm just curious if... The schools that are doing the best with that situation is the students actually take care of taking the recycle and putting it where it's supposed to go instead of the custodial staff. Those schools are actually doing the best with it. Uh, when I was at Smyrna High School as a teacher, uh, in the shop, in the agriculture shop, you do have trash. But in the classroom, didn't have trash. We had all recycled materials except for the shavings out of the pencil sharpener. That was the only thing that was truly trash. You know, so, you know, just trying to change the culture. Is, is Hannah Bloom still with you? Yes, absolutely. Could she start making a ro rotation through the schools and she's, cultivating goodwill? She's doing that. She's, uh, this week, she's actually working with uh, Central Magnet School doing the Call Creek Green Handed program that she's developed. Uh, and catching different classrooms, just doing a good job and, and posting that information. Uh, she tries to do that with at least two schools a year. It's something that you don't want to do every week, uh, but trying to draw more attention. And the hope is once you get them caught green-handed, they'll continue doing the right things and maybe that'll bleed over to the classroom next door. On that $4,000 a week, how many miles does that truck run a week? It's hard to say on the one right now because it's a eight month old truck and it's literally spent as much time in the shop as it has on the street. I drove it back from the shop uh, Friday. It has 11,400 miles on it. So your 4,000 your 4, a week is counting maintenance costs and everything's not operational fees alone? That's correct. It's total loaded up cost. You're right. <laughs> Is there any type of trash that you're not taking anymore? No, from the schools? That from was, anywhere. From anywhere. Uh, at the recycling centers, we don't take you the know, equivalent of two wheelbarrow full of, of construction debris. We don't take yard trimmings and brush. Right. Uh, but we still take household trash and a little bit of the construction type stuff, which most people don't have much of it, and then all the recycled materials. And some and plastic then, and all that we're still taking. Yes. Uh, we're having to truck our plastic to Nashville now. Our local provider is uh, struggling. Uh, so, and you'll see it in the budget numbers. Uh, what, we take all the glass to near Rivergate Mall up to my, my drive. And then the plastic and the single stream, we're going to uh, 
River Hills Drive, which is on the south side of Nashville. Get off First Pearl Road, go Spence Lane to the dead end, Cave Road to the dead end, back across the railroad tracks. Uh, so that's increased our, our haul time. Uh, not quite double, but in some centers it's double. Uh, I've been tracking the difference. Uh, like Haley Road down here was a 30 minute turnaround. Now it's a two hour turnaround. You know, so you're looking at a little over $100 an hour for a trucking cost. And so you, cost really, goes up. you really could use a new driver and a truck, right? Well, we got trucks, but we don't have drivers to put in all the trucks. Drivers. That's the problem right now is hiring drivers. Right. Do they have to be CDO? Yes, sir. <coughs> drug free. Air brake? Drug, yes, drug free. <laughs> drug free, but air brake, uh, air all brake of that. Yes. Okay. Y'all having a little trouble getting over $4,000 a week <laughs> to operate this truck. How old's the truck? The, the one that's on the trash route now is only four, uh, eight months old. Eight months old? Mm-hmm. Well, what kind of maintenance are we doing to run it up that high? Uh, What's tearing up? Most all of it's warranty work. So it's not costing anything? Well, it's not, but it's downtime. So we're running an older truck to replace that. But we, we run a, a garbage route five days a week. And the garbage route picks up all the schools, all the shut-ins, jail, nursing home, juvenile detention, uh, and then some county buildings. You know, we don't pick up any private industry at all. Um, and then the recycle truck runs four days a week. We had it running five, but it, it wasn't enough recycle out there. So we did some rerouting and took it off the street one day a week. Uh, if they'll start recycling better, we can put it back on the street. Uh, but what we do with that truck on Thursdays is when he doesn't actually have a route, either he runs the paper out of the convenience center, the mixed paper load, or he'll run a roll off truck. But to, to come up with that cost, is that at the end of the calendar year, you know, we have a budget, you know, to, to run our convenience center operation and the trucks and the drivers, my salary, everything is in there. So we'll take the dollars spent, not budgeted, but actually spent. And every evening I'll go through the driver's paperwork and I'll track the number of productive hours of the truck. If he's broken down or stopped for lunch or whatever, those hours don't count. So at the end of the year, I'll take the number of hours divided by the total dollars spent and get cost per hour. Last year we That's had the whole budget. Yeah, the whole budget. Because right. mm -hmm, the whole the whole budget for convenience centers. You know, so that takes in all the convenience center operation and everything else. To operate a front loader truck is actually more expensive than a roll off truck. But we don't track the cost separately. So that's the best number I can come up with and that's the, the average truck cost. And we, we run anywhere from 1,700 to 2,000 hours a month. Of course, you got to remember our trucks are running seven days a week, unless it's a holiday. The, my truck cost is a, a truly loaded up cost. Back, back to you. Come back to that if you need. But the, <laughs> I'm done with that. <laughs> the, you are having to take glass to the landfill. <laughs> It gets contaminated. It clear gets with colored. Is that? Am I correct in recalling that? We used to have to do that to contaminate loads that go to the landfill. Now it's just where they're trashed. I mean, just you know, people put trash in them. A lot of that settled down when we stopped having unmanned centers. We don't have any more unmanned locations. Are you taking glass to the landfill? No, our glass loads are they're going, still going to Rivergate, uh, and they're watching them pretty closely because some of them are not very good quality loads. And they charge us uh, $40 a ton by the time we get done with the process and feed and everything else. So a load of glass, depending on where it comes from, the haul time, we can be as high as $600 to, to get rid of the load, trucking costs plus disposal. That's we're paying to not take to the landfill. Yes. We're paying to save volume on the landfill. That's correct. And our hopes is that we'll wind up with a better market and a closer facility to deal with that to where we can lessen that cost. And it's still a bit cost. And the recycle business on our side of it, we actually generate revenue off of metal. Uh, the loads of metal average about a ton and a half. Uh, so it's not a, you know, because there's a lot of airspace in there. So most of the time we don't actually make money on a load of metal, but it, all, it offsets most of the trucking costs. Cardboard, 
Uh, last week was paying eighty five dollars a ton. It went down this week. Paper we've been getting about forty five dollars a ton. Uh, aluminum, you know, brings in money. Plastic and glass. It just there's no revenue coming in whatsoever. The single stream product doesn't bring in any revenue. Are we storing like the glass? cardboard to plastic till we can get a load to truck or are you picking it up at each center and taking it to disposal? We're picking it up at each center. And taking it whatever's there, whether it's a bushel basket full or it's no, full, sir. we're taking it all? Used to when we first started, our, we had what they call segmented containers. You'd have a divider in it. You'd mm -hmm. put clear glass, green glass, blue glass, glass, brown glass. So what we've done is the industry has changed to where they just have colored glass. So we have a container for clear and we have a container for colored. That way when that, that container fills up, then we haul that container. Where when before, if the brown filled up, you had to haul the container when the rest of it was empty. So it actually saves us money by doing it that way. The plastic containers are separate containers. All the containers are separated in by commodity so we can hopefully haul a full load. When I go over to Haley, it is packed. It is packed mm -hmm. on Saturdays when I go. Well, on the downside on, on the plastic now is we don't have a disposable facility for that. So if you've been in a center, some of the centers starting two Saturdays ago when the plastic container filled up, we had to put an open top in its place. We wouldn't have a place to dump. And then during the week, dump that actual plastic container, let the open top fill up with plastic and haul that up there and dump it. So I've got one driver that got to experience that. My guys have never used a hand tarp, but we had one. We bought one several years ago. I had a driver that kept tearing up the tarp arms, and so I ordered a hand tarp and told him, I said, next time you tear up a tarp arm, this is going to be <laughs> bigger tarp. So this, we've got to use it now. Do we regulate, or are we able to regulate out of county dumping to middle point? far as glass, if they bring in a load of glass. No, sir. Okay, so they... We they have no regulations at middle point whatsoever. Whatsoever. Nothing. That's Nothing. What they, well, I, I wasn't sure how we do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's just like to middle point, we don't exist except for taking our trash, taking our trash. and giving us a little money back. So we could dump there ourselves. <laughs> but uh, we still... Have, have an eight to twelve year window for middle point? No, it's not quite that long. It's eight to ten at best. I think it's actually less than that. Less than that. Mm -hmm. but any other questions on the report? I make the motion to approve this report as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we've got some budget amendments. Uh, what I'd like to do, the first one I'm looking at is motor vehicles. Uh, we released a, or awarded a bid last week for roll-off trucks. Uh, hopefully we're going to actually get it ordered this week. When they gave me the budget number for what to expect, it was quite a bit higher than the truck came in, so we're going to wind up with about $20,000 left over. <coughs> we want to take that $20,000 from, from the convenience center budget and move it, move it into the sanitation education budget, which is litter grant. Uh, we already have budgeted to buy one litter proof van, so if we add this $20,000, we should be able to buy two. And the reason I want to buy two is We've done our research, and the best van to suit our needs is a Nissan 12 passenger van. And there's seven 2017 still out there. Only one of them has, has crank windows. I want a crank windows, the rest of them have power. If we wait to 2018, then to get a V8 engine in that van, you have to get leather interior. We don't need leather interior. So, there, there's some vans out there that we can get a pair of them, which so they have electric windows on them. But if we make this budget amendment, we can go ahead and buy two litter crew vans this year instead of next year. And the reason we need those vans is the ones we have, we've got three. Uh, two Fords that are the same year model and a Chevrolet a year older. And the two Fords literally have the floor in the back next to the rear fender rusted out and we've had to patch the hole. Well, we can patch the hole and keep the end base from falling through, but we can't get the fumes, keep the fumes out. So that's the reason we're trying to go ahead and get these two bands replaced. 
and that it would be buying that, those off the state bid. Okay. You're, you're decreasing a budget by 20. Yes. And so it's a wash on. We're not asking for any new money. We're just moving vehicle money from one budget to another. I'll make a motion to approve this uh, request. Second. Made and shut. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Cush? Yes. Commissioner Nipper? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. I've, I've been solid waste director since 08, and this will be the first small vehicles we bought. We've been taking Henry down, so I was listening closely when these others are getting new trucks. <laughs> we, they, they've been using old vehicles. They have not been getting new vehicles either until the last year or two. <laughs> and we're fine with those. There may be a couple of used ones for sale. Well, well, see, if they put them up for surplus and then we ask for them, then we don't have to actually buy them. They just transfer them. We did that for a while, and then the mayor said, I mean, where'd you get all those? We had to get rid of them. All right, the, the next one is uh, for the post closure on the landfill, and it's for leachate collection. Uh, so we're asking to take uh, $53,000 from the solid waste fund balance and put into the line item to for contract for post closure care. To, we think that will get us through the end of the budget year for leachate collection. Is this problem getting better or worse? Staying about the same. We're hoping by by the time we get everything covered up, so everybody thinks we can keep the water from inf infiltrating into the landfill. I'm not sure that's our problem, but you know, if that's what it takes to get it. It's not better. coming from the top. Where's it coming from? I think there's an underground it's, spring. It's no, wait a minute. It's pure speculation. That's true. What weather springs? What I think. <clears throat> that would form through a man-made pump? Mm, it's all, it'd be underneath it, yeah. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Made and seven. Commissioner Dodd? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Cush? Yes. Commissioner Nipper? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serena? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Reba Carlton is our grant writer for the county, and she's written four grants for us this, <coughs> this year, and we've been awarded all four of them. We've already accepted two. So the first one we want to look at is for the used oil grant, which is automotive fluid grant. Uh, the total is $141,200. Uh, going back toward the back, it has a breakdown budget of that total and then the locations for where those go. Uh, one of these grants was for a new convenience center grant, which they offer a little more money if you're building a new center. Uh, that center location is going to change. It's going to wind up being at Leanna. Uh, so when we approve this, we'll also have to send it in with an amendment to the state to amend the location. So I'd like for you to approve the grants and, and with an amendment. Also in that amendment is Walter Hill was gonna receive one. So since Leanna is gonna wind up with one, you don't need one that closely. So the one that was gonna to go to Walter Hill will probably wind up going to Bradaville. That way we'll still have north, south, east, and west of the county covered the best we can. So these new locations are noted in this four-page document? No, this document does not have it. This is the grant that was actually sent from the state. Okay. The amendments, and I talked to, after property management last week, I called the, the guy at the state and told him what was going on, and uh, they were trying to determine if it was best for them to amend the grant before we accepted it or for us to accept it and amend it later. And I haven't gotten an answer back from them. so. I'm assuming we're going to accept it and, and then amend it when we send it in. 
this grant require matching funds or any kind of not on this one no sir. match uh, I would make a motion to approve with uh, uh, let's see how I want to work this Do you like for me to with the with location notes amended you accept the governmental grant contract with the amendment of the location at Leanna and authorize execution. Well, we need to, there's more than and one. Walter and Walter Hill. I thought that was on the next one. But, well, they're all tied together. <coughs> there's four. It's four one total locations. grant four with four locations. Here. I think it'd be better if you just make the motion to approve these, the grant with the permission to uh, substitute the appropriate uh, other location for the center that's not going to be built. <clears throat> Give us enough flexibility to work with with the state on this. Okay. And authorize execution. Yeah. So with any required amendment by TDEC to uh, change the location for one of the centers. Two of the centers. Yeah, one or more. Make that amend mm -hmm. motion. matching grant. So we'd have to spend two hundred thousand dollars to reflect the hundred thousand. Uh, this would be amended to go to the Leanna location. So this is a new site or like an <clears throat> expansion? It's a little of both. Uh, the piece of property we have in Leanna is a lot larger than what we're actually using. The, our current convenience center sits on about a quarter acre and it's a uh, probably a little three plus acre piece of property. So right now the, there's an old school building there that's in really bad shape, but the fire department keeps a fire truck in it. Uh, so that building would need to be torn down and a new fire truck garage built on that site and then a new convenience center built on that site and then the, the ball fields would go away. Uh, the lights and the poles would need to be used somewhere else and the bleachers used somewhere else, and everything else would get taken apart. They don't they don't have any leaks out there anymore. There's a few people that practice there occasionally. Is the commissioner from this district okay with that? <coughs> Excuse me. Is that two hundred thousand in your budget proposal? No, no. But we didn't put any budget mon money in it. Uh, we would have to let bids and have contractors do all the work for us. So when we let the bids, then that would give us the budget number that we need and then we do a budget amendment to come out of uh, fund balance to, to fund those things. All right. So you spend 200 and you get 100 out of it? Yeah, we get 100 reimbursed. And you see in the grant the way they've got it written up, the, the containers and the fencing would pretty much take the hundred thousand yeah. dollars. And, and Leanna was selected based on volume. It, it was one of many you could have chosen. Well, the Leanna is literally our smallest location, and it is very fairly busy, and that's the one that we've had a lot of issues about traffic in the streets. Oh yeah, you uh, started. So we. We changed the direction of travel to bring them across the parking lot of the ball fields. Uh, and that's helped. It doesn't get them 100% out of the street, but if they'll pull up fairly close to each other, you can get 15 to 16 cars lined up. This will resolve that? If we build the center and design it the way I'd like to, yes. Uh, if you've been to Weekly Lane, you go in the entrance of Weekly Lane, and it's three <coughs> lanes wide. You go to the back of the property and then turn right into the center. Uh, well, of course, we're going to have to have different setbacks there because we're not in an industrial setting. So I'm hoping the 
the lean end and turn across the back and then turn in would help us with our setbacks and then you should be able to get every car off the street that way. And then the fire department filled in would sit next to our entrance but not be part of the convenience center. That way the traffic's not going to block them and they're not fenced in or anything. Will the 200 complete it? The compactors and containers alone is about a hundred sixty thousand dollars. So the hundred grand it is specified on page two, but not the matching hundred. Right, yeah, the matching hundred is right beside it. 100 from the state and 100 from us. Correct. I'm just looking at page two. It did uh, oh, page two. 30,000 for compactors and et cetera, and that totals 100. Uh, attachment yeah, one, what, page that's two. That's what we put in the uh, original grant grant. request. Mm -hmm. So you've not presented to us the other 100 with detail. That's correct. We would the, get that detail? Well, the, uh, we have a bid out that we have received, but we've not selected. Uh, the state, when you do a bid process, you've got to go through a pretty stringent process, which is identical to our county process. So we've already put the bid out, but we cannot award the bid before we've actually executed the grant. So our approval you know, here is approving the grant, and then the, how that grant spent will be looked at at a future Yes, we'll have to do budget amendments all the way through the grant because we don't have the funding in the budget to, to actually expend it. So as we get ready to do a project, say the site work, whatever that's going to cost, we'll have to bid that out and award the bid along with a, a budget amendment to pay for that. And then the fencing and the, the electrical, the, all that. The only thing we've taken bids on is the, are these containers and these compactors. Okay. All the other stuff, we don't have even a site plan drawn on the end yet. Okay. Right. But we need the same kind of motion here to accept the grant with re permission to request the change from the Rockville Center to the Leanna Center with the state. They'll have to approve that. We have a favorable idea that they will, but we don't have it in official writing yet. Thank you. Did you um, would, would you read the motion, please? I accept the grant with a requested amendment by TDEC uh, on the location to Leanna. Um, and authorize execution. So moved. We have it's the paper copies that I handed out to you. An agreement, uh, amendment to the agreement for the solid waste disposal foods feasibility study. Uh, we had our SWAC committee meeting uh, last Tuesday evening, and the decisions in that was to proceed with the with possibly forming a waste authority and to investigate the possibility of a. Uh, landfill consolidation. Uh, in our current our current agreement with GBB got us through Tuesday night and in those decisions, but there was nothing in there for what they call Pass 5 is actually the implementation process. Uh, so what they're asking for is a $200,000 amendment that would uh, probably end on or before the end of December of this year. Uh, and then we've got some language in there that we're, we're, where we can heavily control 
what's talked about and how it's talked about and what it's going to cost us to do those projects. Uh, so there's still some things that we're looking at, you know, I would personally like to see us do waste of energy, we just cannot afford that. But these are still contingent on the city of Marshboro and the county attorney's final approval. They've glanced through it, but they've not studied it. They're okay with it so far, but they still need a little more time to study it closely. And the 200000 is for what? It's to pay the consultant fees to help us get, get things going and get the decisions made and, and plans implemented to get us on our path to whatever we're going to do uh, with or without middle points. On top of a hundred we've already paid them. Did we not give them a hundred thousand basically close to a year ago to bring these findings to you? Two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand. One hundred thousand. Right. For a consultant. Mm -hmm. now, the, now the county has paid all that and the city of Mercerboro is going to reimburse half of that. But we paid that up front. So, so our half is one hundred twenty-five. Right. Or at least. I have several issues with this. Okay. You know, it may not be the time to bring it well, out. Let me give a little bit more background here. Primarily, this thing is going to help us determine if we can get the Solid Waste Authority agreed upon between all these jurisdictions. That's, if we don't do that, that's, we'll stop. If that stops, that, this thing will not go the whole way. Nothing. I mean, that's the primary role here, is to help us facilitate all these discussions with these other entities to see if they'll participate with us in the Solid Waste Authority. Solid Waste Authority, who will they report to, or will they stand by their self they'll, and not report to anybody? They will stand by themselves if it's, it's a, if it's a developed. So the there county will be, there commission... Will be, there will be a board. So the appointed. county commission will have no control over them What's, either? Well, you look, there will be a lot of interaction. This is a very complicated process. That's what I it's going to take. In other words, it's going to take some capital. It's going to take maybe some of our actual resources folded into, the, uh, into that operation if it ever happened, that they might take over our solid waste uh, that we're providing those services. So all of that's going to take a huge amount of discussion, legal-wise and politically-wise, before it can actually be done. It's not a done deal by any means. But if we're going to have a solid waste program, it's going to take all of the jurisdictions working together very, very closely, much closer than they've ever been, I think. Or we're not going to be able to manage this plan. The county can't manage solid waste going forward for this whole county. Neither can the city of Mercer. Neither one of us want to either. It's more or less like a utility function. Like water or electricity, it's a it's a need that must be met for all of us in some sort of coordinated way. And, and who does this authority report to? I mean, you said they they will be appointed, but by the mayor? Or? Oh no, they won't be appointed by the mayor. Okay. That's got to be determined here as well. Probably it will be representation from each of the jurisdictions that decide to participate sort of based on population or some, some number, where the county would get X seats on the board, the city would, and the other three entities would get a seat or seats. I mean, I, I have reservations that constituents look to us to handle their trash and everything, and when it comes trash in the road or not picking up trash, they're going to be coming to the commissioners. So if the commissioners have no say on who's on this board that oversees. Well, you, if you get three commissioners, you'll have full responsibility on appointing those three. So I don't know if it's going to be seven or 11 or 15 uh, board members. But whatever your allocated number is, those will be your appointees. Appointees. I mean, I, I'm. I'm for, you know, moving forward with this, but not to the point of setting up a 
uh, a new board. So, I mean, well, if that, there's... That would have to go through the county commission to right. approve, yeah. approve that anyway. And the way I kind of read it in the paper or something, that that's coming up in the next, uh, for the next meeting. Is that no. not... There's it's not. There's not another solid waste advisory committee meeting set. There were may be done. Okay. Now this starts the discussion between all the actual uh, jurisdictions as to what they want to do and how they want to do it. And we don't even have that model built yet, but it's sort of, it would be a board that leads the Solid Waste Authority, and you would each have, each of these jurisdictions that are going to be a part of this would have their allocation of their people that they put on that board. Okay. And who put in, and the one who puts it on there would be like uh, the city council, the commissioners, smarter council. That's, yes. One, two, elected officials, I'm saying, I guess. There are only two recommendations that came out of that last meeting, and one of them is, is to start the dialogue to see how, what the fundamental foundational things are going to be this, that would be required to put something in place like this. And then you still got to get everybody to agree that they want to participate. Right. Okay. Uh, of the two hundred thousand dollar request, it, that's a fifty fifty split between city city. Yes. And the language in this has been changed that every task that's identified in this document, before they can start this task, they have to tell us they're going to start and we have to review if we're going to continue with the next step and the whole discussion. And we can, the way it's crafted, we can give 60 day notice and terminate the thing at any time we choose to. So this doesn't mean we're going to go spend all this money unless we're making progress or if we get to the stalemate we can't move any further down the road on the, on the authority for whatever reason, then it's over. The, the, the budget that's, that Steve recalled that we approved previously for con consultation, mm -hmm. did it achieve tasks one through four and, and, and the result of that is task five, Correct. which right. requires another 200,000 in, in a bucket that may or may not get consumed to advance the topic. We're hoping Is that it won't correct? Re yes, you're correct. Well, we're hoping it won't require that. That's the reason uh, in the amendment starting on page one, section three, uh, the mayor and I worked pretty hard on changing the language of what they had, basically giving us the control to where the consultants would come to us. We need to start this task, whatever this task is. And we need to be able to approve, yes, we want that done and how much is that gonna cost before they ever begin working on it. If the county were to do the other option, and, or even with the Solid Waste Authority, if we were to work with Republic and allow uh, expansion or, or whatever. That's that's a different agreement. We, we'll do that one next. But yeah, but he, well, that question: can, can, can we can we change the contract the way it's worded now, to where other people bring their trash in, they have to pay a higher tipping fee? Listen, that that's all up for discussion. We have not chosen which direction or which option is going to be executed. We're down basically to two choices at this moment in time a consolidation or a uh, what we call the multiplex yeah. approach and whereby we would build one probably two uh, transfer, stations. transfer stations and we start hauling the stuff somewhere else but if we did the consolidation or the expansion we could rework the contract with well, that, all that is up for discussion we, we have not tried to drill down on any of those ideas because we're not even sure that option is on the table until we determine until they determine if what they propose to do is technically and financially it feasible. Take, it may take two years for them to decide whether that's a good deal for them or not. Because they have to explore geotechnical and hydrological and then have to get permitted. 
but all of that would be on the table for someone to discuss before you decided that that's the option you choose. Well, it seems like if we do go with, end up going that route, we would want to make it to where the people bringing the trash in have to pay more. Pay more than what we pay? Is that what you mean? To pay more than what we pay, sure. We well, can't have any control over someone else's landfill. We don't have any control over today. How would we have any control over when it was consolidated with the county land? Well, since we can renegotiate everything. It never happened. Well, if it didn't, if, if you didn't get the terms that you wanted, you wouldn't, you would never have a consolidation. Yeah. It would we just have a bargaining chip. Well, I'd say you're wasting your time. They got a whole lot more money in this county's got. But that's just my thought. In a nutshell. Yeah, you can try and negotiate anything. And your 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 paragraph three has has some teeth to it, so I appreciate seeing that. Right there. And attachment B has a, a table of scales, and it looks like every task has to be pre-approved for that 200,000 buckets. Now, if you don't want to dip approve the, the 200, approve a smaller number, and when that's gone, you, you could force a return, you know, for us to get more money. How was the 200 determined then? Was it a It's uh, just an arbitrary number that the consultant has picked, and we've got it. The terms here where we can control the actual expenditure and we can stop when we choose to. And if we do this, then we'll need a budget amendment for it too, because it's not budget. When is Murfreesboro going to pay their half of the canal we've already run it? When we, I think we've already built them through last budget year, but we haven't built them or anything else. We're, we're through with, we've already spent the 250, they're going to get their bill for the half of it in a few days. Okay. They're in, I mean, it's not a problem. And they've already reviewed the first edition of this right here, and they're, they're, they're ready to go. I was the one that sort of held up and changed this language substantially. Our approval tonight sends it to the full commission. Yes. It, or, subject or, or, or to, or not subject to further order. review by both of our attorneys and uh, their city council as well. Well, you have to go to budget next to because it's money. Your amendment, your amendment for this is in our staff? No. So if that's what you're okay with. Yeah. So I can say that. Is Murphy yeah. Spur the only Sorry. other one going to contribute? Uh, 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 that's the only one we're for sure is going to contribute. The only one that, would, that we've gone through county commission to, to do an approval for an MOU. So what happens to those? Well, they ride our so they, they're sort of ride, still riding our coattail at this moment, okay, just to be honest with you. My understanding of Laverne, when we did the MOUs originally, Laverne actually did an agreement and went through the city of Murfreesboro, but it never came through the county commission. So, you know, if we get that agreement and run it through, then they may pay their their percentage. And it's, the original agreement was for Murfreesboro and Rutherford County to split it. And then if the other cities came on board with it, then it would be divided by population. Well, the onus is on the county. It's our responsibility. State law says if the cities don't do anything, then it's our responsibility to take care of it. And, and uh, I'm recalling the urgency that we had to support the initial mm -hmm. concept. Right. And so I'm inclined to, to continue that momentum and make a motion to accept this as written, um, and knowing that we will have further dissection of this as it moves through the budget process. Right. So I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. Second. Okay.
next we have an access agreement. This would be between Rutherford County and Middle Point Landfill to allow them access onto our property to do their due diligence for core drilling and sampling and uh, to evaluate what is actually in our landfill, the depth of the, of the trash in it. <coughs> Somewhat they'll get an idea of the consistency of what is in there. And then it would also, you know, give them the, the tools to do the geo technical study for the water flow underneath and all that kind of stuff. And all this does is just give them access to do the testing and nothing else. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Okay. What's the hurt? It takes a long time for them to do their testing, get their, their plan together, go for permits and everything else. So uh, this going to if this were to go through, Middle Point would be fairly near their last year of operation before the consolidation could it be actually done. All the planning and all that would have to be done at that time. Seems a little premature to give them access to anything the county owns before any, like the committee is formed, you know, the waste authority is formed. Seems like we're, we're on a fast track. Well, no, it, it's actually the other way around. If, if they go, go in and do their due diligence and do their testing and they find whatever reason, no, we don't want this deal, then it's done. So it's better to go ahead and let them see if it's even a doable deal before we go any further. So if it's, if it's something that they deem is not financially feasible or the liability issue is too high, too great for them, then it's, it's a done deal. It, we, nothing's going to happen. You know, something we're, we're leaving out. This is a highly impact situation on this entire county. Mm -hmm. You know, of course it is in Walter Hill. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's where the landfill is for mm -hmm. the people that don't know or have never seen it. The people in Walter Hill have had that long enough. They've put up with the traffic, the mud on the streets, the trash in their yard. You know, they're wore out. Mm -hmm. If it hadn't have been there in the beginning, it could have developed probably like the other side of Murfreesboro. But it's still their home, right. and they're proud of it. Mm -hmm. And I think we shoved it down their throat long enough. Now, back when it was first set up for Republic or BFI or whatever name it went under, it's, it changes evidently a little all the time. Mm -hmm. It was probably a great idea. That carrot probably looked good to the commission that chose to do that. Free dumping, a little tipping fees, and had no idea on the impact it would have on that community. Well, we do today. You can drive by and look. It's not here at all. Right. Somebody, I think we as a county, need to bring it on ourselves to take care of Walter Hill. They've had enough trash, you know. If we if we can, you know, if we can come over hurdles of expenses to build nice buildings, nice schools, we're supposed to be coming up the fourth fastest growing county in what Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Can we not handle our trash? Let Middle Point run its course three to five, five to ten, whatever. Every time you see a number posted, I've noticed it's growing. Mm -hmm. It was up to 12 in this week's paper. Let them run their course, close their landfill, and take the 17 other counties that's putting trash in there with them. This is our first opportunity we've had to take back control of the trash coming into this county. We have none now. Nothing. We can't control any type of hazard material, any type of solid waste, nothing. This is our time to stand firm, and I don't know how the rest of you commissioners feel. I felt like the committee that reported to y'all the other night, mm -hmm. they probably done well at their job, but I thought the decision that you have brought here tonight was made hastily. Within 30 to 45 minutes of hearing those recommendations, decisions were made to start. I thought it needed more study. It needs to come before the full commission on any of this. We represent the people. They voted us up here 
to help them, mm -hmm. not bury them in trash. And I know the money situation is critical, but, you know, we borrow money for other things. There's no need of saying we've got to pay it all up front. I don't know what it'll cost. You may not know. No, we don't. But still, I think it's a situation we need to stand firm mm -hmm. on for this county and our future. I have a two-year-old grandson. I'm worried about him when he gets my age and when his kids get my age. Mm -hmm. That trash, if it's piled in there on the same spot for 25, 30 more years, it'll be devastating to this county. Right now, you can smell it on a five-mile radius. Depends on which way the wind's blowing. If you put 30 more years on it, you'll be able to smell it in Barfield, because you'll sure be there. Now, you know, if they can do something to our county landfill that we can't, what's our problem? Why can't we rework it we don't and have use it? We don't have any place to put it. Where are they going to put it? In their landfill. That's right. So why can't we sift through what's there, if anything? The mulch, it's bound to be composted to dirt what's been in there 20 years ago. It's bound to be. Stuff rots. Mm -hmm. You could probably peddle it out to some type of soil company, a mulch company. You could probably some revenue in that. And you could get a big enough spot to start a county landfill if we cannot get it out of this county. I'm for moving it out of the county. We've got enough. And to continue the growth that's coming in and to attract everything that people want to attract for development, we don't need a 10-mile <coughs> smell of a landfill in this county. Well, boys, that's my point, and I'll stand on it till y'all vote it the other way, but that's, that's how I am. If I believe I'm right, I'm standing there. And I'm here to represent the people of Walker Hill and help them. Plus, we need to consider all the county also. It's going to affect the entire county. Mr. Jordan, would you like to add anything? We haven't Amen. been, wait just a minute, we haven't been considered, well, maybe not considered, but we've not been involved in any of this discussion. It's my district. Will is the next district closest to it, which I can understand why. They probably didn't want my negative input, but that's all right. You've heard it tonight. Mr. Jordan, anything? I'm not allowed to speak. I'll say amen. Can we Please. suspend the rules and let Mr. Jordan speak? Sure. Let me come up there. Uh, I'll agree with everything Commissioner Pierce just said. We're a progressive county. We're bound to have a better idea than digging a hole and putting our garbage in it. This is the 21st century, for God's sake. Uh, there's 16 other counties, I believe, bringing their other municipalities, bringing their garbage here, and they're all waiting on us to solve their problem and keep their trucks coming up and down through our neighborhoods and. I don't think that's the correct thing to do to the citizens out there. I'm six miles away. I think I smell it on the right day in my house. And uh, I think the other counties will find a, pro a solution if their feet get put to the fire and we don't solve the problem for them. But if we do do something with Republic, Allied, BFI, whatever it's called this week, uh, they won't do a thing. They'll just keep on trucking their garbage here. But if it gets painful enough, There'll be another landfill, a regional facility, or something come up, in my opinion. That's what we need. In my opinion, we need a regional facility. It may cost a billion dollars, but you put 16 counties paying for it, it's not that hard a pill to swallow. But if we solve this problem, they're all just going to sit back, and they're going to keep doing what they've been doing. And he's exactly right. Those neighbors out there, the people in the neighborhood, they don't deserve it no, for another they don't. 25 years. You know, I invite you all to walk to ride out there and look. Spend some time with some of them I mean, and listen to their stories. Do you have any idea how many truckloads a day go in that place? At no point? Yeah. I'd say there's 100 comes in hours, so there's probably 300 goes in there. Yeah. That's semi-trucks coming up and down, clogging up our traffic, going down Thompson Lane through school zones, going down Jefferson Pike, they agree not to do it, but to do it anyway. They go down 840 and come back from the racetrack down at 452. I mean, just getting the traffic off the road would be a huge help to the county and the, and the neighborhood out there. But like I said, I know it's going to be expensive, but I do believe in my heart that if, if we don't give everybody the other counties a cop-out, 
which that's what this will be. They can just sit back and ride coattails. I was mentioned a while ago riding coattails on something else. Then, then there will be a solution come, and it may be. A, hopefully, it's a facility in another county that we can participate in, and be region, a regional solid waste authority, not a Rutherford County solid waste authority. And as long as I'm up here talking, I'm awful concerned about a solid waste authority that could have seven members, and this commission appoints three. Cause we've got a losing hand, yeah. and we're getting something crammed down our throats. Right. And it's our landfill that's going to get used up. And our citizens out there that are not city citizens, they're not Laverne citizens, they're not Smyrna citizens, they're Rutherford County citizens that don't deserve this. But that's just my opinion. I ought to be yours. I appreciate yeah. you uh, letting me come for this. Thank you. Uh, Steve, I, you said a moment ago you spoke and may not want to be heard because it's negative. I don't think it's negative. I think you're speaking your piece. Well, thanks. It's, just, it's all about positive direction. Mm -hmm. That being said, does this, do these steps we're taking address Steve's concerns? Is this an avenue to address this concern? Could this re investment and consultation lead to no landfill, heck no landfill, and we go elsewhere? I mean, do Absolutely. So I mean, the, the, this may resolve our problems. The maximum, this may be the correct avenue. The maximum flexibility option is two transfer stations, probably some type of recycle facility, all of which, you know, the recycle, if it's a recycle facility, actually a processing facility, and then you process all the recycled material within that facility. The transfer stations, you know, if Middle Point's not here, then we would have to find another location somewhere else to truck our trash to. Those are specifics that I don't think we need to put any more time on yet. It just it, for the moment, at least. Is this the avenue to address the problem? Which, which avenue are you talking? Is that this consultation the way to go the to address his serious concerns that are legitimate? <clears throat> Will's articulated very well. Is this commitment to the two hundred thousand commitment to consultation and? pursuing a potential authority resolve all these concerns? Well, I don't know if it was. Unless you get the commission to approve the amendment to the cons consulting agreement. Which has been motioned and seconded. I bet it hadn't gone to the commission yet. All that's yet to be discussed and, up and, there. And will the commission have the authority to ultimately decide <clears throat> If it will be a three-person, but will we be giving up our you, our there will never authority? All that's on the horizon for us to say yes be, or no. To. All that would have to be discussed with every individual jurisdiction to determine what the structure of this is, and each of them would have to make their own decision if they want to be a part of it. If we don't want to be a part of it, you vote. You don't want to be a part of it. It never happens. You never get informed. Well, I, I made the motion. And my intention was to support what Steve just said. So I call the question. If we in agreement with Steve, I call for the question. Well, I made a motion to allow the, the public people to have access to the county landfill to evaluate it. That's what we're on now. And I thought it was seconded. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, I said so, that. So we're, right. on, yeah. we're on the we're different, on, gotcha. different thing now. This As that progressed, I likewise concur with that. Call for the question. There is no way this access agreement needs to take call for the question. Yeah. Well, you have to, the only thing you're going to decide is that do they think that they want to participate in some sort of discussion on consolidation? We don't have to agree that we're going even to have any discussion with them. But we you don't go know allow what, them to test drill. You just yeah. They have to look and see if it's viable. If That's they say no, it's not. We don't like it. If they say no, if then they you've got no, no choice no. except to move. Hold, start holding it somewhere else. I think we're moving way too fast. On the question has been called for. Yes. Call a roll on. Call a roll. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Cush? Yes. Commissioner Nipper? No. Commissioner Piercy? No. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Five to two. Oh, this is a step into a, a huge landfill stuff you just done. All right, we're ready to go into the solid waste budget. Mm -hmm. Does this go 
to the budget committee the access agreement there's no money the access agreement doesn't have any money in it, it does not have but the uh, first one has to go right mm -hmm. it will go to the full commission right yes sir mm -hmm. I always have a paper copy of this because I forgot we were going to do these tonight. So I didn't put it on your computers. Uh, there's actually five budgets here. It's fund, solid waste is fund 116. Uh, so the first budget, the first page there is uh, sanitation and education. That's our, our litter crew, uh, all the things that support them, and our recycle educators coordinate. Uh, we did the budget amendment. To, to move money, so uh, the line item 718 is only six thousand dollars instead of 50 because we're not going to buy it. We'll, if we buy those two vans this year, we won't need one next year. So six thousand dollars is for a trailer to go with one of those vans. Uh, the other increase is in travel. Uh, Mimi's been elected to the uh, Tennessee Recycle Coalition board, and there's some travel that goes along with that, so we've increased our travel line item. And then the only other thing to really note is line item 169, part-time personnel, that is unfilled. We've not been able to find anybody for that position yet. Any questions on that budget? I'll make a motion that we approve the solid waste and sanitation budget. No, not the not whole budget. Oh, education and information yeah. budget. Sorry. Second. Motion made and set. Aye. The next one is labeled convenience centers, and that's a state term. We call them recycle centers. Uh, but the top uh, lines all the way down to 212 is all salaries and, and benefits. Uh, in that line, 149 is our convenience center attendance. And what I'm requesting is a 50 cent per hour uh, wage increase for them. And uh, move on down to other increases. Communications, line item 307, we always have to ask for a budget amendment every year, so we bump it up just a little bit, thinking that we may have that taken care of. Uh, which three, one, officer, where, which number? 307, communication. Every year we have to do a budget amendment of, of roughly $3,000, so I bumped it up. Hopefully we won't have to do a budget amendment this time. Uh, 321 is engineering services. Uh, we're going to build new convenience centers. We're going to have to have somebody to draw them up and do the plans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 351 rental is actually what we pay out of that is the porta potties in the convenience centers. And historically, we've been servicing those once during the winter months and twice per month during the summer months. Uh, and it's not working very well, so the increase is to do it twice a month year round. And uh, plan 452 utilities is similar to communications. We have to do a budget amendment each year to increase that, so we bump that up. Hopefully, we'll, we'll make that one work just a little. Uh, data process and equipment the reason that has gone down we're in the process of trying to, to get a computer and all the uh, uh, software to go with it for truck diagnostics right now if a check engine light comes on one of our trucks we have to take it to Mac and Nashville for them to tell us that the ambient air sensor is bad or something so once I think it'll pay for itself in driving a truck up there and back over time uh, 718 is motor vehicles in that line item uh, would be two new roll-off trucks in the next budget year plus one one ton crew cab uh, flatbed or dually truck uh, what we would use that for is, <coughs> is with the uh, use all grants you have to pull a trailer to haul that that oil and those fluids somewhere uh, to another collection site, which would be one of ours, because we hope to have used all heaters to actually burn those. 
uh, and it's a 1300 gallon tank on that trailer so we need a heavier truck than the little half ton S10 that we have and it's a 99 model and pretty rough shape uh, so that's what's in that line item and then uh, as you can see in 724 site development there's no money in there for convenience centers to be built that would all have to be budget amendments because uh, we don't know what it's going to cost can any, can any of the hundred pay for its own engineering? All, all the convenience center on in the, the grant. On can the, the grant be used to pay for its own? On the automotive for fluid collection, yes. Just for? Okay. Just for that section. And the one where we're putting another 100000 into to Leanna, I just wonder if that, our matching funds can pay for engineering we've already approved. Yeah, it, it should be able to if, if we don't. If we've got money left over, if we do containers and defensive, yes. We'll spend well more than the 100000 yeah, we only got 25, yeah. 222000 $222, increase. That's what No, that's what you're looking at there is, is encumbered. That 222000 is encumbered purchase orders that have not been spent. Department request, that. original budget, 1718. I'll just look at those two numbers. Original amended 2.5 was this year's budget. You're asking for 2.7. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, uh, it's uh, increasing. It's the first one we've seen increasing significantly. Right. Where the, the trucks is $170,000 right of, yeah. of the increase. Yeah. This is yet to be determined if that's going to go all the way through the process. You want to take them all together? You want to take them independently? Typically, we take them separate. Oh. Typically, we take them separate right. unless you decide to do them. Right. Any questions on that budget? Motion to accept. It's other waste collections. This is mainly our Haley Road operations where we do the recycling and electronics. Uh, there's no big differences here. Um, line out of 312 contracts with private agencies, that's, that's where we pay to have the electronics recycled. And 399 other contracted services is where we pay the to recycle glass and plastic. That's the president for the budget committee. Second. No instructions. All in favor? Aye. Uh, the next one is landfill operation and maintenance. We're not accepting any construction demolition at this time. Uh, once we get finished with our construction and, and do our, our measurements and determine how much space we have left, we may or may not reopen. Probably will not for that. Uh, but really, it's just a guess. Uh, the biggest difference is here is in 312. I took quite a bit of money out of that because we're not using that equipment at the landfill as we were. But that's the biggest difference. Uh, and basically what I did there is took the 
the contractor money from the operating landfill and put it over here into that because we've got to do the, the post closure care on it. Now, technically, we're not closing the landfill. We're just not accepting construction and demolition debris. And the reason for that is for us to continue to burn brush, the landfill still has to be able to bury the ashes. So if we technically and, and actually close the landfill, then we're out of the burn business as well. Consistent. Uh, that line is actually the, the GBB contract that we were talking about. That's where we've been paying the consultant for the feasibility study. And what's in there now is actually what we had in last year's budget, and it rolled into this year's budget. That's the reason there's actually no money budgeted in there. We're just running off of last year's money. Uh, and then we are spent all that money by the end of last month. Is that where the leachate money kind of comes from that you come back and chat with us about? Yes, sir. The private agency participates in that too, right? Yeah, we've got a private right. contractor that hauls that for us. It's, it's an on site environmental, they take that to Nashville and treat it and all that kind of stuff. It costs us 12 cents a gallon. Is, and is that, that's where, is that in 312 contracts with private agencies? Is that where that haul fee and processing number is? No, 312 is our uh, contractor for equipment moving dirt and that type of stuff. Okay. So where does the processing at 12 cents a gallon or whatever? 366. So it, it's all lumped in? The, 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 okay, it's all lumped in there. Mm -hmm. all right. Motion to approve. Second. I'll send the budget. Second. And set. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. That's all I have, unless y'all have any other questions.